Did you know right now, Hamilton is seeing more price decreases per day than actual sales? Let's talk all about that this week. But before we jump into that, my name is Justin Little and I'm a local real estate agent here in Hamilton, Ontario. If you like the content that you're hearing in this video, be sure to pop a like on it to get in front of more people that can benefit from this type of information as well. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. That way you can join the growing community we have going on here and stay in touch with the Hamilton real estate market. So yes, it is true. We are actually seeing more price decreases per day in Hamilton than actual sales. In fact, over the course of the last seven days, there have been 143 price decreases and only 89 sales. So that is significantly more decreases every day. People are doing this because the market has shifted a little bit where we have such a high amount of inventory in Hamilton. The competition to sell is just so much stronger right now that you have to decrease to put yourself more in line with an appealing sale price for a buyer. As well, the buyer pool has dried up, affordability has gone down with the higher interest rate. And those are just some of the factors to take into consideration why we're seeing so many price decreases compared to sales. But let's talk about how this affects home buyers and home sellers. So if you're a home buyer, this means that you're going to have increased bargaining power, which is amazing because over the last few years, that is something that did not exist if you were a buyer. In fact, now you're going to be able to put conditions in that maybe you weren't before. Maybe you want to sell your house before you purchase one. So we put a condition in there to get your property, you know, to purchase that property conditional on selling your property as well. You're also going to have more options as a home buyer because more inventory is popping up, less is selling. The higher priced homes are starting to come down while all homes in general are starting to decrease their prices, but it's keeping more inventory on the market, giving you the buyer more choices when you're out there looking as well. You don't have to be as aggressive as you were in previous markets. You can actually take time to reflect and make a decision. Now that's not in every case. Sometimes there still are situations where a house is priced in incredibly well, and it will sell fast. It still will go in a couple of days and there might be two or three offers. However, that isn't as often as it was previously. And not too many properties are holding offers like they used to. A lot of them now are listing price. They want, you can go in, take a look, think about it, and then make a decision in a day or two. Don't have to rush like you did before. This is also a good opportunity for investors or if you're somebody that's looking into investing in real estate, the reason being 40% of all homes are either vacant or tenanted that are on the market right now. In fact, 30% percent of the ones that are listed on the market right now are vacant. One out of every three, pretty much. That means these people still have carrying costs, whether it's property tax, utilities, some of them probably even have mortgages still that they're making payments on and not collecting any rent. They're going to want to sell. So if you're an investor and you're motivated to purchase, there could be an opportunity to strike a really good deal in this market. But let's flip over to the home seller side. Now, if you're a home seller navigating this market, you have to price it competitively. And that doesn't mean you have to be the lowest priced home in the area. You just have to be one of the top one to maybe even third best value for the home. So that doesn't mean you have to undercut everybody's listing price. If your home has the upgrades, has the updates, has things in it to justify uh, the price that you're asking, then it will sell. But this is not the time to go and list over, you know, 40, 50,000 higher than what your market value is worth because you will be forced to reduce, which obviously we are seeing. That's what this whole video is about. Everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of properties are reducing significantly more uh, than the ones that are selling. So you don't want to be in that boat. You want to be one of the 89 that sold, not one of the 143 that needs to do price decreases. And I could do a whole video on why price decreases and sitting on the market aren't good because it makes your listing look stagnant and all that. But let's stick on the topic for this one. Next, you also need to make sure that your house presents itself in the best possible light, like making those small repairs. Staging is a huge help and those types of things. In previous markets, they probably weren't as important. You were just listing the house and it was selling and you really didn't have to to worry about that kind of stuff. But now you have people coming in weighing your house against a lot of other properties and thinking, well, this one needs, we need to do that. We need to do this. So presenting your property in the best possible light is more important than ever right now. As well, you have to be flexible and willing to negotiate unless you're pricing it aggressively on purpose and generating lots of interest out of the gate. Maybe you get one, maybe you get two offers, then that is a route to go. However, most cases, sellers on finer wine a price for what they want. However, buyers don't want to pay the full asking price. They want to come and negotiate it down because buyers are saying, hey, I got all these options out there. And the longer I wait, the more it seems the prices are coming down. People are decreasing the property prices and more options might get listed. So you have to be willing to negotiate and you have to be flexible in this market. And then don't forget marketing strategy is key when it comes to a market like this. The more eyeballs on a property, the more you are going to get for your house. So you need to get that maximum exposure and hiring somebody that can get you that exposure is crucial now more than ever. Gone are the days of just putting the house on the MLS 
less and waiting for it to sell itself. Finally, I want to give you some advice on navigating this market just in general. Number one, you got to work with a skilled agent, somebody that has the experience like myself that has been in the business for over a decade, has dealt in markets where it wasn't always a seller's market. When I first got in, average days on the market was like 60 days. So you had to have the ability to know how to make a deal happen and get it across the finish line. So like I said previously, you can't just list it and hope for it to sell. You need somebody that knows how to navigate this market to get you through it. Also, you're going to have to set some realistic expectations. If you're expecting that you're going to get prices that were 2021, early 2022, or even really anything 2022, because your neighbor had gotten X amount of dollars, get that out of your head. That was an anomaly that was specific to that market that no longer exists in the market that we're in. So you have to prepare that you're probably going to end up getting a little bit less money than you had previously anticipated unless you've been following the market super close. And staying kind of on that topic, it's best to stay informed. You want to keep your eye on the market to see what is selling around you, what new listings are around you, what's your competition if you're listed on the market. If you're a buyer, you want to stay informed to see what properties are selling for. That way you're able to know when is the best time to strike that deal. When a house is priced at a good price and you can go in and really get it a good price. That way you know you're getting the best possible value out there. And then as well on the buyer side, financial readiness is crucial because you want to have that pre-approval in place. You want to know that when that deal does pop up, you can jump on it. And lastly, for both buyers and sellers, patience is key. For sellers especially, you have to be patient. The average days is creeping up there. And unless you're pricing it aggressively on purpose, don't expect it to sell very quick or anytime soon. You may have to sit for a few weeks. And then as well, if you're on the buyer side, being patient is a good thing too, because if you're patient, it will allow you to take the time to make sure that you're buying the best possible property for your needs. Anyways, I had a blast making this video for you this week. Hope it was informative and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Take care.